Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Alex here. In today's video, we're talking about a subject that many of you requested me to do. Which airline should you choose to work for? Etihad, Emirates or Qatar Airways? Those three big Middle Eastern airlines, of course, and you might want to work for them as a cabin crew, maybe as a pilot or within the aviation industry. Now we're going to focus more on the cabin crew aspects uh, in today's video, obviously, because I work for Etihad as a cabin crew. So I'm going to share my thoughts about which airline should you choose. Now, of course, as an Etihad crew, I may be a little bit biased here, but nevertheless, you might find my opinion interesting. Now, those three carriers are one of the most famous uh, airlines in the world at the moment and have been for quite a while. Everybody's seeing the job of being a cabin crew working for those airlines as something absolutely beautiful, magnificent. You get to travel the world, you get to earn a good salary, you get to live rent free in those beautiful cities, Doha, Abu Dhabi and Dubai, of course. And yeah, life is beautiful. Now, no matter which one of those three you choose, you are making a good choice, in my opinion. You know, as a 21 year old, as a 25 year old, as a 30 year old, if you just want to work for a while, if you want to earn a good paycheck and travel the world at the same time, each one of those options are good. All three of them are good. They're all good. Um, I want to stress this first before we get into the video properly. OK, so. Let's start with Qatar Airways. Now, this one is the most controversial one, let's say. I mean, it's the one that people, they have a lot of opinions on and so on and so forth. Now, my brother has worked for Qatar Airways uh, four years time, right? My sister is currently working for Emirates and I work for Etihad. So all three of us siblings, we are working for different airlines or have been. Yeah, my brother was in Qatar and uh, was he happy there? Did he enjoy his time there? Uh, yes, yes, he did. Qatar has a lot of destinations, uh, not more than Emirates, but more than Etihad. So Qatar is number two in those three uh, as the destination number. And there's plenty of destinations that Qatar flies to that even Emirates doesn't fly to. So you get to really, really see the world with Qatar. Also, one of the pros is the crew, the cabin crew in Qatar are very outgoing. So whenever you have a layover in some beautiful destination, most of the crew will want to go out, will want to maybe uh, enjoy party and so on and so forth. So you'll have plenty of things to do in your layovers in Qatar. Also, people find Doha to be cheaper to live in than uh, Abu Dhabi or Dubai. So you might go to the grocery store and fill up a full cart and pay less than you would pay in Dubai. And I also think that's a pro. If you want to save your money, Qatar is definitely a good uh, workplace to be in. You know, and being a cabin crew for Qatar, yeah, you will definitely save a lot of money. I can guarantee you that. The country recently hosted the World Cup, Qatar 2022, and everybody had a lot of fun with it. You know, it was a, a big, big, big event. Um, tourists from all over the world flown there. You know, there's a lot of great facilities. There is a lot of tourism nowadays. The country is expanding itself at a rapid pace, there's a lot of development, a lot of opportunity. So all in all, you know, going to Qatar is, is I would see as a good move regardless. Also, if you are a plane geek, if you enjoy aircrafts, Qatar has the most variety when it comes to the fleet. Qatar Airways, the fleet has A320s, A330s, Boeings, you have everything, even the 380, the 777. Everything is in Qatar Airways, so you can fly a variety of planes. You will never get bored as a crew. Let's just put it this way. Now, a bit of the controversy and why some people choose not to work for Qatar Airways and they choose to work for Etihad or Emirates is that they're more strict. And that's what a lot of people say. Of course, they are indeed more strict with their rules. You might have somewhat of a reporting culture on board sometimes um, and also the social media policy may be a bit uh, strict. Like for me, as an Etihad crew, I post a lot of pictures in uniform, I post video videos of myself, reels, TikToks, whatever, and I can do so. Even the airline kind of encourages encourages us to uh, to do so as it's a good promotion for the airline you know as long as you maintain your professionalism while posting on social media you shall be fine but in Qatar Airways the, the rules are more strict with this so you cannot really 
post a lot of things on social media. You you can post things from events, as far as I heard, dressed in uniform, but posting in uniform on a daily is not really um, admitted, as far as I know, and they don't have that culture within the, the crew community. Now, there's a few other rules Qatar Airways may have. It's quite hard to get married if you, you know, you want to get married within the Qatar uh, airline, it's it's quite difficult. You have to request permission and it, it may not be granted. And I think it's a whole process. I'm not really sure about it. But uh, yeah, also, if you're a smoker or a drinker, Qatar Airways is, is not for you because they have a strict policy when it comes to smoking and drinking in your uh, accommodation. Also, as far as I know, the accommodations are still separate. That means uh, the building in which you may live, if you're a male, you'll live just with males. If you're a female, you will live just with females within the same building. Now, obviously, we'll have a flatmate. You will have a flatmate, uh, which will be the same sex. But other than that, the building itself will host the same gender. While as in Etihad or Emirates, we have mixed crew within the same building, so it doesn't really matter. If you want to have a girlfriend in your same building, you will have a girlfriend in the same building, so it's fine. But in Qatar, the rules are a bit more strict with that. You must remember the country is quite conservative, and you, you, know, you have to dress a bit conservative yourself. You don't have to cover yourself in everything, but you have to dress um, accordingly, right? You don't want to go on skimpy clothes. Now, are skimpy clothes accepted in UAE, in uh, Abu Dhabi or in Dubai? Um, kind of, kind of. It's definitely more of a westernized cities, both of them, and uh, you will get away with more than you can get away in Qatar. So if you're very outgoing, you like to drink and you like to party, I would say Doha is not as good as uh, Dubai or Abu Dhabi. For that particular reason. Now, apart from those rules, Qatar, I think it's a great airline to uh, to work for. Um, it definitely has its pros. The crew themselves, the crew community is very, very nice in Qatar. As far as I heard, uh, I heard very good things. They do support each other and um, they have a lot of fun in the layovers. So do not reject Qatar just on the premises of that. And if you yourself, you're a more conservative person, you will definitely find a better space in Qatar. Absolutely. Now, with that being said, let's move on to Emirates. Emirates, the biggest international airline in the world. Everybody's talking about Emirates. Emirates is, you know, the ultimate thing, right? And, you know, to a degree, it is true. It is true. It's the most desired job out of the three of them. People, they want to apply and become an Emirates crew more than for any other airlines. So that definitely tells you something, the prestige. There's a prestige about it. Now, obviously, the rules in Emirates, they're more relaxed um, than Qatar Airways. You still have to be careful on board. You know, you have to do your job properly. There is a bit of reporting culture here and there, but mostly crew, they really enjoy their job. They enjoy their destinations. This is the airline with the most amount of international destinations. Dubai is a hub, a central hub of the world connecting the East and West. You will have destinations throughout the world. And uh, it is absolutely an amazing airline to work for. You know, my sister is there. I have a lot of friends there. You know, we are here on the same boat, let's say. And um, yeah, it is a very exciting airline to work for. As for the uniforms, many people, they prefer the Qatar uniform. You know, many people, they like the Etihad one with the hats and everything. And many people, they like the red of uh, Emirates, you know, the representative red lipstick and the bonnet thingy that uh, Emirates crew, they wear. And of course, if you're Emirates crew, you will live in Dubai, which is one of the most cool cities to live in. You know, you just tell your friends you live in Dubai. Everybody's like, wow, really? That's so amazing. Because it is seen as being very cool. That's definitely a cool factor. It has a cool factor to it. It has also a big amount of accommodations as well. Um, all accommodations are, are free, of course, as for Etihad and Qatar. You live rent free. My sister, for example, she got a really cool accommodation next to the Museum of the Future in Dubai downtown. And she can actually uh, see the Burj Khalifa 
Uh, not from her window, but, you know, if she goes downstairs, she can see Burj Khalifa uh, Tower. So there's a few really positive aspects of living in Dubai. You know, events, parties, uh, the lifestyle, the beach, the pools, everything. There's also a lot of opportunity if you want to shift jobs, if you want to change your, your careers. Dubai has a lot of uh, things to offer, absolutely. You can also get married within the crew community. You can have um, a family and you can have a live-out allowance. In that point, you can move from your accommodation to an outside accommodation, and then your rent will be paid by the company. Your rent will be paid by Emirates. And it's the same thing in uh, Etihad. So Etihad and Emirates, they have this little thing in which if you get married, you get live-out allowance, and you can live with your husband or wife uh, or whatever, and you can have kids, and then your rent is being paid by the company. So it's a bit different. It's a bit of a different process. Also, smoking and drinking is allowed within the accommodation premises. The same thing for Etihad. You know, it's your life. Whatever you do in your days off, uh, it's your life. As long as you present yourself for duty, you're prepared for duty for your flight and everything is cool, that's about it. Emirates, a great airline to work for. Now, there's a few things, and maybe we can talk about some downsides while comparing it to Etihad. Now, here we are, Etihad Airways. My airline, I've been working in Etihad for like almost seven years now. I'm getting old in this airline. <laughs> but uh, it's definitely been a journey. It's been a journey and it's been fun. I made a lot of friends, a lot of experiences, a lot of traveling. Now, it is the newest and the smallest airline out of those three. So out of Qatar, Emirates and Etihad, Etihad is the smallest and Etihad is the newest. It was founded in 2003, so quite uh, not so long ago, basically. Uh, Emirates was founded in the 80s and Qatar was in the 90s, so they have a bit of a heritage. Now, this may be better for some reasons. Maybe the management is more streamlined. Emirates has the same CEO for a long time, so things can be more streamlined in those bigger airlines. But Etihad is doing quite well. I find things to be easily within reach. Etihad culture promotes a lot of communication. So if you want to talk to your management, you can. If you want to contact your manager, you can. Like there's a lot of avenues in which you can go to. If you have an issue, you can solve it. So those things, they really matter. You know, communication is a big thing in Etihad. So we even have an internal social media to express ourselves and our concerns. Now, the number of destinations, obviously, because it is the smaller of the three, it's the least amount of destinations. So it's not as many destinations as Qatar or Emirates. Now, there is staff travel for all of those airlines. So if you want to use Emirates to go to a specific destination as an Etihad crew, you can do that because you are staff and you have access to other tickets on other airlines like Emirates, Qatar, Turkish, whatever airline. But even if Etihad is the smaller one of the three, it still has a lot of destinations. So don't you worry about that. <laughs> Plus, we're opening new destinations uh, this year, next year as well, hiring so many crew this year, next year as well. So there is a lot of expansion going on right now in Etihad. New crew are being promoted to business class much faster than the other airlines at the moment. Um, and that's a very positive thing. So if you join Etihad, you might become business class in, uh, in maybe one year or something, which is very, very good. I waited for a long time because of COVID and other things, but now things are expanding quite rapidly. So that's great. That's really good for an airline and for the people working for that airline. Now, salary wise, it's gonna be roughly the same in all three of them. So. There's not much of a difference. I believe sometimes in Etihad we can earn a little bit more just because uh, we fly sometimes more. Especially now it's a busy time, it's a busy period, we need extra crew, so the airline is quite busy and we fly a lot. But if you want to earn a good salary, that's, that's welcoming, I guess. Smoking and drinking in accommodation is permitted. What you do in your days off is your business. As for the fleet, 
Etihad has also a variety of aircrafts. We fly the newest jets, the 787-10-9. We fly the A380. A380 is back in service, so we'll be flying uh, starting this summer. We have the 350, which is a newer aircraft. We still have the 777s, which may be phased out pretty soon. And they bring in Airbus A320neos, so the new aircraft as well. Out of those three airlines, the Etihad fleet is the youngest, the youngest number of years on those planes. So the planes are new. Etihad planes are the newest, and I think one of the newest in the whole world. One other thing, I find Abu Dhabi to be better to live in than Dubai. Sometimes I go to Dubai and just the traffic and noise annoys me maximum. Like, I, I just can't deal with Dubai traffic sometimes, but Abu Dhabi way more chill, way more nice, way more settled. Also, Abu Dhabi is better for families. It's not that crazy of a party scene. So if you want to party, yeah, you go to Dubai, much better options. But if you want to maybe save your money and be focused on other things, Abu Dhabi is better, is definitely a better place to live in. And you still have a lot of attractions, a lot of touristical aspects of the city. Um, the city is expanding, the city is heavily promoted on the tourism side, so that's great. You have also a lot of uh, nice beach areas and beach places, which are better than Dubai, in my humble opinion. Um, but yeah, I digress. It really depends. It's up to the individual to decide which one is better, Abu Dhabi or Dubai. But Abu Dhabi is smaller, it's nicer, I find it better to live in, to be honest. Also, the accommodations are new. So if you join Etihad Airways and you'll come to Abu Dhabi, you'll find your accommodation to be quite new and uh, everything will be set in place for you. With that being said, I think this conversation is really helpful, right? I hope it is helpful for you. Um, all those three airlines are good airlines. Yes, Qatar is more strict than the other two, but that doesn't mean it's a bad airline. It's it's a very good airline by all means. Work-wise, I think Etihad is also the best, is the least reporting culture. You will not have issues with your colleagues at work. Uh, the cabin seniors and cabin managers are the nicest in Etihad, as far as I know, as far as I talk with the people from other airlines. So that's really a plus. Also, the management listens to you if you have any uh, queries or issues. Now, obviously, I haven't worked in the other two, but my my uh, siblings have, my friends have as well. So I'm telling you that as um, I may be a bit biased, but that's my opinion. So now a few more things I uh, remember to mention uh, before ending the video would be in Etihad, you can travel as business class on the staff tickets. So in Emirates, in Qatar, you cannot travel business class, but on Etihad, you can travel as a staff on business class with very little money. That means you may pay, uh, I don't know, 400 dirhams and travel business class on a seven hour flight. Like there's so many staff travel benefits in Etihad. And even you have staff travel benefits on other airlines, the same. You can book business class on Qatar or something within Etihad. It's absolutely amazing. Also, we can travel on the jump seat. If you have a standby ticket and the aircraft is full, all the seats are full, right? Then you can travel on the jump seat as a passenger. You just have to have your Etihad ID and you can travel as a passenger. And this is one of the best reasons, I think, to join the airline because you can go back to your home country even if the plane is full. Qatar doesn't have that, Emirates doesn't have that. In Emirates, you cannot book business class as a staff. You can only travel in economy on a reserve ticket. So, you know, it's better in, um, in Etihad for staff traveling. Of course, you have to do your own research and then choose yourself which airline do you think it fits best. Also, you can apply to all three of them on an open day or assessment day. You can try to see how is the interview with all three of them. And uh, if you do get Qatar, go for it. If you do get Emirates, go for it. If you do get Etihad, go for it. Um, they're on a pretty similar level as uh, work life. You will enjoy your life in each one of them. I hope so. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please post them down in the comment section below. There are probably many things I missed in this conversation, many things I forgot to say. I'm just having an open video right now, an open conversation. I'm not reading a script, right? I'm just expressing my opinion about those airlines. 
And uh, yeah, for me, it's been a great seven years. Um, soon, I think I will um, I will resign, maybe sometime soon. Let's see what other opportunities come into my life. But yeah, it's definitely been a journey and uh, it's worth it. Now, ladies and gents, please leave a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Again, comment down in the comment section down below. What do you think uh, I'm missing? If you have any questions, uh, other people might answer your question in the comment section down below. So you help each other. Uh, until next time, my name is Alex. See you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.